March 11, 2011, dawned like any other day in Fukushima Prefecture. The sun rose over the Pacific, casting a warm glow on the coastal towns and villages. Hey everyone and welcome back to Vision Vibes and today, we're diving into the fascinating world of Fukushima nuclear accident. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, you're in the right place to learn something new and exciting. Farmers tended their fields, children went to school, and life carried on at its usual pace. But at 2.46 p.m., the earth shuddered violently. An earthquake of magnitude 9.0 ripped through the seabed off the coast of Japan. Tremors shook buildings in Tokyo and sent shockwaves across the Pacific. In Fukushima, the earthquake triggered immediate dread. Japan, on the volatile Pacific Ring of Fire, was no stranger to seismic activity. But this earthquake's power was unlike anything in recent memory. Little did they know, it was a prelude to a far greater catastrophe. The day had taken a terrifying turn, forever etching itself in history. The epicenter was located approximately 70 kilometers east of the Oshika Peninsula of Tohoku. Seismographs around the world recorded the event, and scientists quickly realized the enormity of the quake. Tsunami warning systems were activated, and coastal areas began evacuations. The tsunami waves, some reaching heights of over 40 meters, crashed into the coast, causing widespread devastation. Rescue operations commenced immediately, but the scale of the disaster was overwhelming. Survivors searched for loved ones amidst the rubble, and makeshift shelters were set up for those who had lost everything. The global community responded with aid and support, showcasing a rare moment of international solidarity. The Japanese government and emergency response teams worked tirelessly to manage the crisis. The events of that day left an indelible mark on the nation, and memorials were erected to honor the victims and the resilience of the survivors. The tsunami, towering over 100 feet high in some areas, crashed ashore with unimaginable fury, its waves surging forward with unstoppable momentum. Coastal towns and villages, nestled along the picturesque shoreline, were obliterated in an instant, their serene beauty replaced by chaos. Homes, schools, and businesses were reduced to rubble, swept away by the relentless force of nature, leaving behind a haunting silence. Cars, boats, and debris were tossed about like toys, highlighting the raw power unleashed by the ocean, a power that showed no mercy. The tsunami's wrath was indiscriminate, leaving a trail of devastation in its wake, a stark reminder of nature's unpredictability. As the water receded, it revealed a scene of unimaginable destruction, a landscape forever altered by the disaster. The once familiar landscape was now an unrecognizable wasteland of debris, mud and shattered lives, a testament to the tsunami's overwhelming force. The tsunami had not only claimed countless lives, but it had also dealt a devastating blow to the region's infrastructure, crippling essential services and communication. In the aftermath of the tsunami's initial onslaught, survivors emerged from the wreckage, dazed, injured and traumatized, their lives forever changed. The tsunami had left an indelible mark on Fukushima, both physically and emotionally, a scar that would take years, if not decades, to heal. While the world watched in horror at the images of the tsunami's devastation, another crisis was unfolding at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The plant, located along the coast, had been severely damaged by the earthquake and tsunami. Backup generators, crucial for cooling the reactors, had been knocked offline, leaving the nuclear fuel rods vulnerable to overheating. As hours turned into days, the situation at the plant deteriorated rapidly. The reactor cores, no longer cooled, began to overheat, leading to a series of hydrogen explosions that ripped through the reactor buildings. The explosions released radioactive material into the atmosphere, raising fears of a nuclear catastrophe. The Japanese government ordered the evacuation of hundreds of thousands of people living within a 20-kilometer radius of the plant. The Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster the worst since Chernobyl in 1986, sent shockwaves throughout the world. The spread of radioactive material was meticulously tracked, with maps showing the affected areas and the extent of radiation spread. Japanese officials held numerous press conferences, attempting to manage the growing public fear and confusion. International aid began to pour in, with countries around the world offering assistance to help manage the crisis. Workers at the plant, often referred to as the Fukushima 50, made heroic efforts to stabilize the reactors, risking their lives to prevent further disaster. Long-term studies were initiated to assess the environmental and health impacts of the disaster, 
with scientists closely monitoring the situation for years to come. The evacuation order sent shockwaves through the communities surrounding the Fukushima Daiichi plant. The suddenness of the order left many in a state of disbelief and panic. Families were torn apart as parents made the agonizing decision to send their children to safety, while they stayed behind to care for elderly relatives or tend to their farms and businesses. The emotional toll was immense, with many parents unsure if they would ever reunite with their children. The elderly, many with deep roots in the region, faced the heartbreaking prospect of leaving behind their homes and memories. For some, it was the only home they had ever known. The exodus from the exclusion zone was a scene of both chaos and resilience. People moved with a sense of urgency, yet there was a quiet determination in their steps. Highways were jammed with cars, trucks, and buses, all heading away from the stricken plant. The traffic was relentless, stretching for miles as people tried to escape the invisible threat. People carried with them whatever belongings they could salvage, their faces etched with worry and uncertainty. Many clutched family heirlooms, photographs, and essential documents, unsure of what the future held. Evacuation centers, hastily set up in schools, gymnasiums, and community centers, were soon overwhelmed with displaced families. The conditions were cramped, and resources were stretched thin. Many evacuees had lost their homes, their livelihoods, and their sense of security. The psychological impact was profound, with many struggling to cope with the sudden upheaval. The evacuation from Fukushima was a testament to the human cost of nuclear disaster. It highlighted the fragility of life and the enduring spirit of those affected. In the aftermath of the Fukushima disaster, the invisible threat of radiation cast a long shadow over the region, affecting both the environment and the people. Radioactive isotopes released into the atmosphere and water by the damaged reactors posed a significant health risk to those exposed, with potential long-term consequences. The Japanese government faced the daunting task of monitoring radiation levels and assessing the long-term health impacts on the population. Radiation, an insidious and invisible threat, can damage DNA, increasing the risk of cancer and other health problems, such as thyroid disorders and cardiovascular diseases. Children with their developing bodies are particularly vulnerable to the effects of radiation exposure, which can lead to developmental issues and other serious health conditions. The Japanese government implemented strict safety measures, including food and water restrictions, to minimize radiation exposure and protect public health. However, the long-term health consequences of the disaster remain a subject of ongoing research and concern, with scientists studying the effects on both humans and wildlife. The psychological impact of radiation exposure was profound, creating widespread anxiety and fear as residents grappled with the uncertainty of their health and safety. The Fukushima disaster highlighted the need for accurate and timely information about radiation risks, as well as the importance of preparedness and response strategies for future incidents. The Fukushima disaster left an indelible mark on the environment, contaminating soil, water, and air with radioactive materials. The radioactive isotopes, such as cesium-137 and iodine-131, spread far and wide, infiltrating ecosystems and human settlements. The once pristine forests surrounding the plant were transformed into ghost forests, their trees stripped bare by radiation. Wildlife in these areas suffered immensely, with many species experiencing mutations and population declines. The Pacific Ocean, a vital source of food and livelihood for the region, became a repository for radioactive waste, raising concerns about the long-term impact on marine life and the food chain. Fish, crustaceans, and other marine organisms were found with elevated levels of radiation, posing risks to both the ecosystem and human health. The Japanese government embarked on a massive cleanup operation. This involved not only decontaminating the land, but also addressing the radioactive water that continued to accumulate at the plant site. Workers, clad in protective gear, removed contaminated soil, decontaminated buildings, and treated radioactive water. The process was painstakingly slow and fraught with challenges, including the safe storage of radioactive waste. Despite these efforts, the long-term environmental consequences of the disaster remain a subject of ongoing research and monitoring. Scientists are particularly concerned about the potential for bioaccumulation of radioactive materials in the food chain. The Fukushima disaster served as a stark reminder of the interconnectedness of human society and the natural world. The fallout affected not just the immediate vicinity,
but had global implications, influencing policies and perceptions about nuclear energy worldwide. The release of radioactive materials into the environment highlighted the potential for nuclear accidents to have far-reaching and long-lasting ecological consequences. The disaster underscored the need for stringent safety measures and robust disaster preparedness plans to mitigate such risks in the future. The Fukushima disaster unfolding 25 years after the Chernobyl catastrophe evoked chilling echoes of the 1986 disaster in Ukraine. Both accidents, while differing in their specific causes and consequences, shared a common thread, the devastating impact of nuclear meltdowns on human health and the environment. The two disasters served as stark reminders of the inherent risks associated with nuclear power and the potential for human error to lead to catastrophic consequences. The Chernobyl disaster, widely considered the worst nuclear accident in history, released far more radioactive material into the environment than Fukushima. The explosion and fire at the Chernobyl plant resulted in widespread contamination across Europe, forcing the evacuation of Pripyat, a city of 50,000 people. The long-term health effects of Chernobyl, including increased rates of cancer and other radiation-related illnesses, continue to be studied. The Fukushima disaster highlighted the vulnerability of nuclear power plants to natural disasters. The earthquake and tsunami that struck Japan exposed weaknesses in the design and safety protocols of the Fukushima Daiichi plant. In the aftermath of Chernobyl, the exclusion zone has become an unintended wildlife sanctuary, with species like wolves and wild horses thriving in the absence of humans. Conversely, Fukushima's radiation leak into the Pacific Ocean has raised concerns about long-term ecological impacts on marine life. Both disasters prompted international responses, with countries re-evaluating their nuclear policies and safety measures. Advances in nuclear safety technology have been made, but the shadow of these events continues to loom over the industry. Global anti-nuclear protests surged, reflecting public fear and opposition to nuclear energy. The disasters have also accelerated the search for renewable energy alternatives, pushing for a future less reliant on nuclear power. In the aftermath of the Fukushima disaster, the long and arduous process of rebuilding shattered lives and communities began. Evacuees, forced to flee their homes, faced an uncertain future, grappling with the loss of their homes and livelihoods. Many had to start from scratch, finding new jobs and rebuilding their lives. The Japanese government, along with local authorities, embarked on a massive reconstruction effort, providing financial assistance and support services. This included grants for rebuilding homes and subsidies for businesses to restart. The physical rebuilding of towns and infrastructure was a daunting task. Roads, schools, and hospitals had to be reconstructed from the ground up. Debris clearance and decontamination required a Herculean effort. Specialized teams worked tirelessly to remove radioactive materials. However, the rebuilding process extended far beyond the physical realm. The disaster had left deep emotional scars on the survivors, who struggled to cope with the trauma and loss. Mental health services were crucial in helping people deal with their grief and anxiety. Communities came together to support one another, offering comfort and a sense of shared purpose. Local organizations played a key role in fostering community spirit and resilience. The Fukushima disaster served as a stark reminder of the potential consequences of our reliance on nuclear power, illustrating the catastrophic impact of natural disasters on nuclear facilities. The disaster exposed significant weaknesses in safety protocols, regulatory oversight, and emergency response systems, prompting a comprehensive global reassessment of nuclear safety standards and practices. It highlighted the urgent need for a precautionary approach to nuclear power, one that prioritizes rigorous safety measures, transparency in operations, and active public engagement to build trust. The Fukushima disaster underscored the critical importance of robust regulatory frameworks, independent oversight, and fostering a culture of safety within the nuclear industry to prevent future incidents. Additionally, the disaster emphasized the necessity for effective and timely communication with the public during nuclear emergencies, ensuring accurate information dissemination and public safety. The event also spurred international collaboration on nuclear safety, encouraging countries to share best practices and improve their own safety protocols. Technological advancements in nuclear safety have since been accelerated, 
focusing on enhancing reactor designs, improving early warning systems, and developing more resilient infrastructure. In the wake of the Fukushima disaster, the international community rallied together to strengthen nuclear safety standards and prevent future accidents. The International Atomic Energy Agency IEEA, played a leading role in developing new safety guidelines, conducting peer reviews of nuclear facilities, and promoting international cooperation on nuclear safety issues. Countries around the world strengthened their nuclear regulatory regimes, implementing more stringent safety requirements and enhancing emergency response capabilities. The Fukushima disaster served as a wake-up call, reminding us of the immense responsibility that comes with harnessing the power of the atom. The lessons learned from Fukushima will continue to shape the future of nuclear power. International conferences have been held to share knowledge and best practices, leading to the development of advanced safety technologies. Training programs have been established to ensure that nuclear plant operators are well prepared for any emergency. Public awareness campaigns have also been launched to educate communities about nuclear safety measures. Collaboration between governments and the private sector has been crucial in implementing these changes. As we move forward, the future of nuclear energy will be defined by these enhanced safety protocols and a commitment to continuous improvement. A decade after the Fukushima disaster, the legacy of the event continues to shape the region and the world. While the scars of the disaster remain visible, both on the landscape and in the lives of those affected, the story of Fukushima is ultimately one of resilience, hope, and the enduring power of the human spirit. From the ruins of the disaster, a renewed sense of community emerged. People came together to support one another, rebuild their lives, and create a more sustainable future for their children and grandchildren. The disaster also sparked a wave of innovation, as scientists, engineers, and entrepreneurs developed new technologies and solutions to address the challenges posed by nuclear contamination. Renewable energy projects have been initiated, transforming the region into a hub for green technology. Local agriculture has seen a revival, with farmers adopting new methods to ensure the safety and quality of their produce. Educational programs have been established to teach future generations about disaster preparedness and environmental stewardship. Community art projects have flourished, using creativity as a means of healing and expression. From the ashes of tragedy, hope blooms anew in Fukushima, celebrated through cultural festivals that honor the past while looking forward to a brighter future, a testament to the indomitable spirit of humanity. That's all for today, folks. Remember to keep practicing, keep exploring, and keep pushing your limits. Until next time, take care and be happy, Fukushima nuclear accident. And finally, I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in. Your support and engagement mean the world to us. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more content like this.